Welcome to ITSS online training. I'm Per Fredriksen from Seven Technologies Denmark, and I'm here to present our SCADA system ITSS. This is lesson 17, maintenance. And after this presentation, there will be an exercise, and we recommend that you do this exercise. In this lesson, I'll tell you about the maintenance module in ITSS. We'll discuss the maintenance list and we'll look at how we create maintenance jobs in our system and how the operator handles maintenance alarms and these maintenance alarms can come both in the maintenance list and in the alarm list. The maintenance module of course is a module that we have integrated in IGSS to allow users to create maintenance jobs to ensure timely maintenance on the process components so that we don't do any damage to our process components. And we want this module to also show maintenance alarms to ensure that the service personnel will perform the maintenance on time. Notice that the maintenance module is included in the standard version of IGSS. This is not an add-on, this is included for free in the standard version of IGSS. This is the maintenance list. It is very similar to the alarm list that we have already looked at. Uh, we have a tree view over here, active maintenance objects at the top, and then all, all maintenance objects here, which corresponds to the alarm lock in the alarm list. We have two new fields that we haven't seen before. These are the type field over here, and you can see periodical use time changes here. These are different maintenance types. We'll look at that later on. And also we have a column called percentage or percent and this uh, shows you how many percent of the maintenance interval has expired and in this case 100% means that the maintenance job is active now. You can also see an info icon, the I here. Uh, the info icon means that there are instructions attached to this maintenance job. We have four different maintenance types in IGSS. We have periodical maintenance, which is a fixed maintenance interval. We have counter maintenance, which is maintenance is due when a fixed value or counter is exceeded. We have use time, which means hours of operation of a motor or a pump, for example, for digital objects only. We have changes, which means that you will have maintenance after a specific number of state changes of your pump or motor, for example. Again, this is only applicable to digital objects. Two things you must uh, notice here, you can combine these types that we see in the table above, so you could have both periodical use time and changes for a digital object, for example. You can also have more than one instance of the same type for one object, so you could have two periodical jobs, for example, saying that after 500 hours you have to do maintenance task one, and after 1500 hours, you must do maintenance task two. So how do you create an object, how do you create a maintenance job or object in IGSS? You start the maintenance module, and notice that the uh, data collection module must be started before you can start this module. Uh, you go into the actions menu, and you select new object. Then you come into this dialog box where you select the object type and you select the object name and you select the maintenance type. So in this case I have selected P1, my pump. It is a digital object and I want to do both use time and changes maintenance. So I have three different options here for a digital object. I click OK and I get a tab for each maintenance type that I selected in the first dialog box. Under periodical, I have created a maintenance job. So let's take a closer look at this. I have a title for my maintenance job, lubricate the bearings. That's what I want the service personnel to do. I want them to do it after 1000 hours. So 1000 hours from the time where I set this in motion. And um, I can also show this maintenance job lubricate the bearings in the alarm list, but that requires that I attach 
an alarm text created in the definition module with this particular maintenance job. So I have attached alarm number 5000, lubricate the bearings, to this job. I can even copy the alarm text to the job title. That's what I've done here, so that I have correspondence between the maintenance list and the alarm list. Now, when I move into maintenance information, which is uh, the place where you can provide instructions to the operator, then I can uh, create textual uh, instructions like this one. You must use Lubricator 1002. I can also provide a link to an electronic manual or video. Could be a PDF file or an AV file that you got from the process component manufacturer or you can link to a help file that you got from the manufacturer. So the operator will have all these options of looking at instructions for the job. When the operator sees a maintenance alarm, he, he can see it both in the maintenance and alarm list. The first thing he will do, just as he would do with a normal alarm, is to acknowledge the alarm. This he can do both from the maintenance list and from the alarm list. When he has done the physical maintenance job, he will go into the maintenance list and he will complete the alarm and this will reset the maintenance interval. If he wants to, if he wants to view instructions, he will click the info icon in the toolbar here. He can also write an operator note. The person who has the uh, rights to do it can create a maintenance job and he can also edit it, of course. Finally, when we look at the alarm list, how does the maintenance alarms occur? As you can see, they are clearly marked with a maintenance icon. This is the program icon for maintenance. So B1 and M1, they have maintenance jobs attached and they're active. The operator can then acknowledge uh, the alarm from here. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit www.70dk/igss.